Hey guys, welcome back to another Helix video. So today I want to do the next installment in my series of getting started with Helix. Today I want to talk about assigning blocks to foot switches on the unit itself. In addition to just assigning blocks, I also talk about assigning parameters where you can change lots and lots of parameters with pressing one foot switch or any number of foot switches as you'd like, uh, which gives Helix tons of flexibility. So let's jump over to HX Edit and take a look. Okay, so here we are in HX Edit. Very basic preset here. We're going to start with just the basics of assigning blocks to foot switches on the hardware unit itself so we can set up a pedal board. Um, you'll need to be in stomp mode, by the way, on Helix Floor or LT to, to see what we're doing in this part. So I'm going to right click on a block, go to Bypass Assign, I'm going to select Foot Switch 2. Just, you can set whatever you like, however you want to configure your pedal board, that's completely up to you. I'm just going to put these kind of to the first first foot switches I come to. Put the modulation on three, delay on four, and now the reverb on five. So now if you're looking at your unit, you have basically your top row is assigned to these pedals that we've just selected. Um, now a couple of options before going any further. If you come over to the bypass controller assign, um, you can do a few things. You can set the color. Um, by default with line six, light orange is uh, distortions, um, dark orange are reverbs, green delays, blue modulations, purple is like pitch shift and synth and, and um, those type of blocks. I find this very helpful in that uh, you can glance down. If you're playing live, you don't have to stop and think too much. If you see an orange, you know it's a distortion pedal. If you see a green, you know it's a delay. Uh, I think it's very helpful. Even when the foot switch is not engaged, uh, you can still see the color around the foot switch. So that, that's super helpful, I think. Um, also, by default, it will name the, uh, if, if you're looking at Helix Floor, it's on the scribble strip or performance view on the LT. Uh, it will name the foot switch what it's controlling, in this case, Scream 808. Um, and most of the time that works fine, but let's say if you have two tube screamers or two delays or whatever in your preset, you may want to come in here and name them something that will uh, help you remember which one is which or why you, you are using two different, uh, two different ones in a preset. Also, if you assign multiple pedals to one foot switch, um, it will just say multiple, and then I believe in parentheses the number of, of things is controlling. Again, that if you have several that way, just seeing multiple, 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 it's not really going to be quite so helpful. It's going to be hard to remember. This is how you can change the name to um, help you remember what these are used for. It just makes it much easier to remember. Um, so that is is simply how you, if you just want to assign things, you know, blocks to foot switches. That's pretty much it, and it's it's really easy too on the hardware unit itself because the foot switches are capacitive, they're touch sensitive. So you just move, use the joystick to select the block, just physically touch the uh, switch, and Helix will ask you if you want to assign that block to that foot switch. Um, another cool thing on the unit is if you have, let's say you have a drive pedal on foot switch four and one on five, and you want them switch the other way. You just actually touch both at the same time. Helix will ask you if you want to swap those assignments, click OK and you're done. Um, super, super, uh, just really slick and, and effective in terms of how quickly and time, you know, you save a lot of time doing things rather than, in that case, rather than going in and changing two bypass assignments, you just touch the pedals, click OK and it's done. So very well thought out. So that's the basics of assigning blocks to foot switches. So let's look at a couple other scenarios. Let's say every time you turned on your Tube Screamer, you wanted your delay to come on. Well, that's very, very easy. The Tube Screamer is, you know, assigned to Foot Switch 2. So we would come over here and right click and change this to Foot Switch 2 as well. Now here's where I was talking about the naming. See, multiple in parentheses 2. That's telling us there are two blocks assigned to this Foot Switch. You know, we may want to change this to say, you know, this is our lead. This When, when this turns on, it, this is our lead sound. We have a tube screamer and we have a delay. So that's just an example. You know, you may want to keep the color light orange so you know it's a distortion based effect, or you may want to use red or something, you know, rather than standard colors to remind yourself that this is a, a combination. This is, you know, this is my lead button. Maybe it's red because it's, you know, that's really, I don't know, whatever your preference is, it's totally customizable. So, um, 
you know, you can go in and assign lots and lots of things to one foot switch if, if you want to do that as well. Um, and that, that pretty much covers the pedal board aspect. Now, you know, I'd like to talk a little bit about how to uh, take that a step farther and, um, you know, assign parameters to a foot switch. Now, what do I mean by that? So let's say we want to uh, use, instead of a drive pedal, we just want to turn the drive on the amp up. So we want a foot switch that acts the same way as reaching over and turning the knob from 2 to 10 or whatever. So that's very easy to do. Right click. Let's see, we're going to come to, we'll do foot switch number 4. Okay, so this being bracketed tells us that this parameter is assigned. Um, so we're going to come over here to bypass controller. So right now we don't see anything because next to the uh, block we're, we're um, working on, this is the bypass assigned. So we're, there's no foot switch to turn the amp off. We really don't need that. So when we click, these are all the uh, the um, parameters. We see drive and we see FS4 and, and you know bracketed off, which is telling us that is being controlled by something. Nothing else here is being controlled. Now we have min drive and max drive. So that's the minimum and maximum value. So when the pedal is off, the foot switch is off, it is going to be set to whatever the minimum is. When you click the foot switch, it's going to be set to whatever the maximum is. So if we set this to three and we set the maximum to nine, right around nine, you know, that means we're going to have, you know, the drive value of three when the foot switch is off, the drive value of nine when it is on. So we can come over here as I click the switch. Oh, whoops, wrong switch. We can see that works as advertised. So um, taking this a step further, let's say you did want to do this and use a foot switch to control the drive parameter. And then you notice like when you, you know, you crank up the drive, maybe it gets a little louder than you want it. You want to be able to keep it balanced. So the easiest way to control the volume on an amp model is champ volume. I mean channel volume. Right click. We're going to assign this also to foot switch four. Okay, we're going to come over here and we're going to select the parameter, which is channel volume. Now, when you're doing something like this, it's you have to think about it for a second, or at least I do when I first start doing this, because now the minimum value is going to be larger than the maximum. Because as we turn the drive up, we want to turn the volume down just a little bit to balance. Um, so I think it was set on 9 as it was. So we're going to say when we turn the drive up, we're going to turn it down to seven and a half. And I'm just using arbitrary numbers. You know, this is something you'll just need to experiment with um, to see what suits you. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this as well. We'll call this amp drive. And let's set the color to, uh, we'll do red. Okay, so now when I click this foot switch, so we have, you know, channel volume of nine, low gain. And when the gain comes up, the volume comes down so we can keep a consistency so we don't we don't hit that drive and now if you want it to get louder you know when you hit the drive don't turn the volume down but if you want to just add drive but not you know start blowing out the volume and getting everything out of whack this is one way to do it um let's say there's another problem let's say this amp model you know lower gain you want more low end and as you crank the gain it gets a little flubby or you know the low end gets a little loose you know, same thing. We'll just come over here, assign this parameter, the base parameter. Come back over here to base. So let's say when the pedal is off, we want the base to be about six, and then we want it down to about two whenever uh, whenever the drive gets turned up, we want the base to come down. So again, here's where we are with it, um, with it off or with it low. We turn the switch on, high gain, lower volume, lower base. Um, you know, this can be applied to any pedal, any effect. Uh, you could, you know, this is an easy way to take, like, say, you know, you have one drive block, a tube screamer, but you could assign the gain to a foot switch. So even though you just have one drive pedal, you could have a drive pedal that, you know, in one foot switch state, the the drive is on two and one it's on 10. So it's, it's kind of like getting two for one without adding more blocks to your preset. Um, and you know, if we wanted to do that using that same foot switch that we were just using with the amp control, you know, we just come and hit a foot switch four. We could keep stacking <laughs> parameters, and you know, as long as we set the minimum maximum value, uh, which parameter, which foot switch, we can do almost anything we want to do.
excuse me, it is super, super flexible that way. And the same thing works with the built-in expression pedal. You know, if instead of instead of just clicking from low, you know low gain to high gain, you know, we could instead we could assign this to you know expression pedal one. And right now, this is controlling the wah, but let's just get rid of the wah so we don't have to think about that. Um, come over back over to bypass assign. The drive is now expression pedal one. Um, minimum value. Let's set a minimum value so. Otherwise, when the pedal's rocked all the way back, it'll you basically will be nothing coming out because the drive will be on zero. So we have that set, and now we'll switch to that pedal. Now the expression pedal is controlling it. So as with the previous example, we could have many many parameters set to the expression pedal. You could have the delay feedback and mix and the reverb mix and different modulation sounds all tied to the expression pedal. So when it rocked back, you have just a dry, clean sound. As you rock it forward, it gets really wet and all these different effects and crazy things start happening. Um, you really, your imagination is the limit with, with this sort of stuff. Um, but it is, you know, super cool. One of my you know, favorite things to do um, and well, one is with the foot switch, like we just looked at with the amp, but probably next video we'll talk about snapshots. Um, you can also, just as a preview to that, right click and choose snapshots to control a parameter. And you have a total of eight snapshots, so you would have eight, you could, in, you know, in theory and practice, you could have eight different settings. So let's say you have one amp model and you want to use the snapshots as channel switching. You know, you could have snapshot one, the gain would be low, and you could step it up and have multiple snapshots to change it. Um, so, you, you know, again, you'd be controlling the drive and the volume and the mid range and the bass, all this stuff with the snapshot. And again, we'll talk about that next video. Um, but just to say you can do it, you know, in a, in a minimum maximum state with one foot switch. And then you know, we'll talk about the snapshot thing next, but either an expression pedal or a foot switch you can use to, to turn these on off to blend, to do all kinds of fun stuff. So, um, you know, these are things you can't really do in the real world. I think in the eighties, this is one of the things they would, you know, use MIDI imp implementation to try to, um, duplicate, but, uh, that was much more complicated. This is so easy with Helix. Um, you know, I, I've been playing since the early 90s, so I remember what it was like before this stuff was around. So um, really, really fun stuff. This is the only way to fly, in my opinion. So anyway, I hope that was helpful to, you know, to kind of explain how to set up a, a pedal board type, you know, scenario by assigning your blocks to foot switches. Also, you know, some flexibility in your blocks to be able to make all kinds of state changes um, and Again, the sky's the limit. Practically every parameter is assignable to a foot switch. So whatever you want to do, it's there to be done. So uh, if there's anything related to this that I didn't talk about or cover, you know, please ask in the comments and I will do my best to answer and help you out. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for checking out the video.